Bonjour YouTube, welcome back to the Tim Reptile channel. As you can see behind me, we've had a lot going on in our facility, aka our dining room, which you can see all about in a subsequent video. However, today we're doing an unboxing and species profile on our first invert that we're keeping as a pet, not as food or as cleanup crew. European yellow-tailed scorpion, Euscorpius flavicordis. So, if this species isn't that interests you, and it interests me because there are colonies of these found in the wild in the UK, keep watching. We're going to cover where we got them from, how to look after them, and a little bit of natural biology. So if that's something that interests you, keep watching, and you might learn a thing or two. So these animals came through the post, very well packaged, next day delivery, very swift service, very good service we've received from the gentleman who sent these, very well packaged, labelled well, internally you can see they were very well packaged. These came from someone who likes to call themselves Geek of Geeks Exotics, specialising in this species. They've got a deal on at the minute, they've got a lot coming through, I think they're seven quid each, so have a look for them in Instagram or Facebook. So here you can see the little scorpions, they're tiny. They're probably, I don't know, 20, 30 mil here. They can grow up to about 45 mil, I think, tops, just under a couple of inches. They came really well packaged in these pieces of Tupperware with ventilation holes drilled, well padded with tissue paper. All three scorpions really fit and healthy. This last one is probably the largest one, as you'll see. He's upside down, but they'd like to wedge themselves into crevices and cracks anyway. So he's probably got himself in that position and is probably quite happy there. So we need to get these guys into their new home, which is really simple because these guys are found in Europe and as far north as Kent in the UK, we should be able to keep them without any supplementary heating. Room temperature should be quite sufficient for them. So we've just got a substrate of cocoa fibre, topsoil and some sand, just a mixture, loose up. We've got some rocks, some cork bark, some leaf litter, mainly for cleanup crew. I think these guys will eat any isopods you put in there, but the springtails seem to be doing okay. It's quite a dry setup, so the springtails are limited in where they can go. You might notice what looks like a water bowl there. We put a little saucer in with some chippings in that we can put a bit of water in, but there's no depth, so there's no risk of the scorpions drowning. So not every species of scorpion can you keep communally, but this is one species you can, as long as they've got enough space, enough hiding spaces, I'm led to believe by the breeder. So we've gone for, for three here. In the wild in the UK, Euscorpius flavicordis is found in several locations, I understand. They can be found in docks and train stations, I think, across the south of England. But their main stronghold is at Sheerness Docks on the Isle of Sheppey in Kent. There's reportedly between 10 and 15,000 of them living in the walls of the docks, living mainly on wood lice, which are found in abundance there. Now, as you may have guessed, with the populations being found in docks and train stations, these aren't a native species to the UK. They are an invasive species, I suppose. But they're not strictly considered invasive because they don't seem to be causing much of a problem. They're not growing their range significantly or anything. They seem to be isolated populations, so they're not causing a great deal of problems with our native species, unless you happen to be a woodlouse living in the walls of the docks at Sheerness. They're thought to have been found at those docks since the early 19th century, possibly coming in on an importation of Italian stone. Its natural range really is the south of Europe uh, into North Africa, with isolated populations in France and northern Italy. So I've been keeping an eye out for this species for quite some time. I was interested because of the fact that they're found in the UK, but there are two other species that are found in the genus that I've seen come up on websites. One is Euscorpius italicus, the other one is Euscorpius carpathicus. They're quite similar, however, as far as I understand, Neither of the other two species have colonised the UK. Now something all scorpion species have in common is that they will glow under UV light. So there you can see a scorpion on top of that piece of cork. But when we turn the lights out and we apply some ultraviolet light, a completely different colour, it'll glow a sort of blue-green. And this is something scorpions do. It's to do with molecules in the cuticle of their exoskeleton. 
Now, why this happens, we don't really know. There are several hypotheses. These include that the scorpions use their exoskeleton as a sort of eye to detect ultraviolet light, which will let them know when they should be out hunting at night. Other theories include it provides some sort of sunblock for them. It may confuse potential prey items, or it helps individuals recognise or locate potential mates when it comes to breeding season. Either way, if you lived in an area where these scorpions were abundant, I'm sure it would be easy to locate them at night and go and observe them. So the following footage has been very kindly given to us by Geek from Geeks Exotics. We haven't been able to capture our scorpions feeding just yet. So Geek sent us this footage. You can see the scorpions under the UV light. About to have a little bit of a squabble over that pretty big cricket there. They can take prey items obviously bigger than you'd expect perhaps, but also they may squabble. Now might be a good time to say, while you can cohab these species and they will live in colonies, they're not beyond cannibalism. If you have larger individuals with smaller individuals and there isn't enough food resources available to them, it's quite possible that they will resort to cannibalism. But here you see this one is quite happily tucking into the cricket while fending off others in its environment. So here we can see some excellent close-up footage of Euscorpius flavicordis eating a mealworm this time. So you can see the light changing there. There's obviously UV light still there giving it that blue-green hue. At this point I should say that exposure to UV light continuously for these scorpions is not necessarily a good thing. One of the theories of why they glow that they can sense ultraviolet light that lets them know when they shouldn't be out so they have an aversion to UV light it would appear but also constant exposure will affect the cuticle and they can have shedding issues and given high levels of exposure over prolonged periods of time it can reduce the fluorescence of them when they are exposed anyway you can see this guy feeding here holding the mealworm with its pedipalp or pincer Comparatively, these guys have pretty big pedipalps, and that's the predominant tool for hunting. However, they have a tiny little stinger, and they are venomous. People quite often compare the sting from species like this to that of a bee sting, which is relatively insignificant. However, you must always be prepared for someone being allergic and going into anaphylaxis if they get stung. The chances are slim, but the potential for complications is there. This is the same with a wide variety of arachnids that are commonly kept as pets. Anyway, I'd like to thank Geek of Geeks Exotics for this footage. Please check them out on Instagram and Facebook, and I hope you've enjoyed today's video. We have a lot more videos coming up, so please hit like and subscribe, leave a comment below, and we'll catch you next time.